Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about the VX3R and the VX1R. The VX1R here is on the left, the VX3R is here. These are both dual band radios and they're very good for being a portable micro HT or handy talkie. Uh, I've been using these radios for a couple of years now and I just want to go over some general differences and why I like them and why I use them. Starting with the VX1R here, one R here we have a SMA to BNC connect antenna adapter. Uh, I use this primarily for quick lease and quick disconnects on my external antenna systems. Uh, this radio transmits at about 500 milliwatts out on the battery and about 50 milliwatts out on low power. And if you connect a power, power source into the port here, you can probably get up to about one watt out and about 300 milliwatts out on low. So it's a very versatile but not very strong wattage transmitting, transmitting radio. Aside from that, it's an excellent reception radio. Uh, the frequency reception from this ranges only from broadcast bands in the AM area all the way up to FM broadcast, all the way up to 999 megahertz. So it's got a wide range uh, of reception. So that's partly why I also carry it, so I can monitor different bands if I want to for communications like police, fire, emergency, aircraft, uh, marine channels. This thing can monitor those frequencies. So it's a wideband receiver. I also like it because I can charge it in the field via the DC port here with a micro USB cable and charge the battery and also run it with some of my EDC Go kits. So that's why I like the VX1R. In addition to all of that, it does have a microphone speaker port at the top here. So you can attach an external microphone and keep this in a safe, dry place while operating. Over here on the right though, we have the VX3R, which is a little bit newer. They, they've stopped making these, and they've also stopped making these radios as well. This, this micro HT is a little bit different in that you can monitor not only one band, but all kinds of bands on the scan frequency. And what do I mean by that compared to the VX1R? Well, I'll show you. Just change the band here. So when I go to monitor and scan my memory banks, you'll notice that this only scans the two meter memory channels that I've programmed in, okay? Whereas this radio, if I go to push the scan here, this radio will scan both two meter lower portions of the six meter band and 70 centimeter bands. So it does a variety of different functions in just one UI system. In other words, I don't have to switch bands to scan all the frequencies that I've programmed into my radio with the VX3R as opposed to the VX1R. Now that is a major point of dissatisfaction for most users of the VX1R, although it's minimal to me because I'm usually on the two meter band only and I have to switch to scan, it's not a big deal to me. Um, this radio by, by its differences can do that and can also do about one watt out on the battery and then I think it's about 300 milliwatts or so on low but I'm not sure about the low power transmission on the VX3R. Another difference with the VX3R is that the memory bank allotment. You have about I think 75 programmable channels in this and I think this one has over about 800 or so. I'm not exact sure on the exact number, but I know this one has a lot more than the VX1R, and you can program a lot more frequencies in here to monitor and, and talk on. Now, the other difference with this is that the batteries are different too. So this one you have a locking button on the bottom that you can engage and disengage to access the battery port here. This is a 1100 milliamp hour battery, 3.7 volt. And you can find aftermarket batteries for this for about five or six dollars online. It's a, it's a common form of battery. I think small cameras use it. And this battery is a little bit more proprietary in that it's a smaller capacity battery. And you can find this battery for about $22 on eBay. This is a 700 milliamp hour battery. So it's a little bit different than the VX3R. Now, another difference is 
the side here, we have an ear phone port for monitoring purposes only, stereo monitoring. So this radio can monitor in FM and stereo decode on the FM broadcast station, which we'll start right now. You can subscribe to the show You'll notice on the bottom it says WFM. There's different types of receiver modes. There's normal FM, there's wide FM, which only applies to the FM broadcast portion frequencies of this radio, and there's AM. So you can change this to whatever monitoring mode you want to do on the radio, which is fantastic. Whereas the VX1R, it does have narrow FM and AM modes, but it doesn't have wide FM mode for the broadcast stations here. And it doesn't have a stereo output with a regular 1 8 inch jack for regular headphones to plug into, which you access from here. Also, the speaker is a little bit more higher quality. I'll uh, put this up to the microphone near the camera. From United Healthcare gives you dental coverage, credits to buy over the counter products. So that's the quality of the microphone, or rather the speaker on the VX3R versus, say, And that is the VX1R speaker system. So it's not as loud, not as full sounding. I don't know if you can really hear that in, in the microphone, but it does have a slight difference in quality, which makes it more pleasant to listen with this radio. Now, this radio, the UI, it's a little bit more laid out neatly. Although I'm used to the VX1R UI, I do prefer the VX1R personally, but some people prefer the VX3R UI, which is fine in terms of programming. Everything's pretty much set here. One of the main differences is the VFO knob can act as a squelch knob or a volume knob as well, depending on the buttons you push on the radios. This particular one has a insert push in and out type of VFO knob where you can turn it and then you push in to lock it so you don't accidentally turn it on and, and change your frequency or volume, which is a kind of a nice handy feature. I personally like that. Some people don't, but I think that's fine. Uh, the main thing with with this in terms of I guess the deficiencies is that well this one doesn't have any charging deficiencies the VX3R seems to have some kind of issue where if the battery is run down on the back here like say this is empty and you go to charge it from the port here on the side you can run the risk of killing your radio which is what happened to me I did some research online a few months ago when I went to charge the battery inside the radio and for some reason it kind of killed off the radio. I sent it into Yesu for repairs and they finally sent it back to me a few weeks ago. So just be aware that if you're going to charge a dead battery in the radio, you might want to get an external charger to charge the battery with and not charge it via the DC port here. So it's something to keep in mind. If the battery is half charged, maybe it won't affect it as much or at all, but your mods may vary. So that is another difference between the VX1R and the VX3R. Overall, I think what I would use these for in terms of application. I would use this as my daily EDC carry because it's easier for me to pull out and talk with and it has the SMA to BNC adapter which I could easily put on the VX3R but the charging capabilities of, the, of this is more flexible even though the wattage is less. I prefer this UI and the uh, flexibility of this a little bit more than the VX3R when I'm out hiking, camping, or just everyday travel. Now if I'm going on a plane or long distance for travel, I would think I'd take the VX3R uh, because the VX3R has a discrete monitoring earplug here and I can listen into what's going on in the cockpit of the uh, airplane or just whatever's around me as I'm walking around and uh, it, it wouldn't really matter. Normally I think I would take a VX7R and a, and a VX3R with me when I'm traveling as a carry-on. So I, I think this could be definitely more valuable in terms of that setting. Uh, if I want a little bit more wattage out for a smaller package, then yes, I would take this. But the charging requirements in field are a little bit more different than the VX1R. And what I mean by that is this can use a basic 5 volt to DC input cable that you can get off eBay for about 99 cents. This one can use the same cable to run the radio, but to charge the battery, you need to buy a $12 upconverter charger, which takes USB signal and just sends it through an upconverter. Uh, unit and then outputs into DC into the radio here to charge the battery. So it's a little bit thicker and bigger and more expensive to take a portable charging 
option for the VX3R in field. And plus that up converter can sometimes generate RF noise, which might mean that you cannot receive as well when you're running the radio. So that is another thing to consider with this radio. Overall though, I think they're fantastic micro HTs. I think the deficiency in the uh, problem with the charging circuitry inside the VX3R is sort of a downer for me, but it's not a, a full downer. So they're both valuable HTs. I would recommend getting the VX1R if you're looking at micro HTs, only because it's so flexible in the field and you might be able to find some for a low price now because they're so old and discontinued. Prices range from about $50 to about $150 online in the U.S. For the, on eBay for the VX1R and then for the VX3R it's anywhere from $125 to I've seen about $300. Uh, personally I would not pay any more than $100 for the VX3R. I probably wouldn't pay any more than $100 for the VX1R personally as well. Um, but I digress. They're both good micro HTs, and uh, that's pretty much, pretty much all I have to say about the VX1R and the VX3R. So, thank you for watching.